One of the things that I really love about all the Blackmagic cameras is the, the menu system has always been super simple to use. Um, you can get through all the various different options, set it up quite quickly. But at the same time, accessing some of those features can be a little bit frustrating. And I've always wanted that ability to just do it straight from the screen. And you guys have got a, an update coming later in the summer, I believe, which I think just magically addresses all of that. So this is the, is it version four? Yeah, it'll be software? version four. Yeah, yeah. So as part, well, as one of our updates for the Ursa range is a new, completely new operating system for Ursa. We felt that the camera itself achieved everything we wanted to do, especially the 4.6K in terms of image quality. Uh, it's an absolutely stunning camera. The hardware is incredible. The sensor is beautiful. But as a as as an interaction with with, with a camera, you know, that is, it's, a, it's a much more emotive and much more physical process than it is with probably most of our other technology that we make. Um, and we felt we could really improve that experience. You know, I think. Um, when you're working with a camera, you need to be able to move around the camera very quickly. It's the ergonomics of the camera that make it great to use. The image quality makes it great in terms of an output, but physically how you work with it on a day-to-day -day makes it a great camera. And, and whilst we had the, the hardware, we felt we could really significantly improve the ergonomics of the software to try and make it that little bit faster, that little bit easier, but without removing the sophistication and, and the quality behind what it actually does. So, we went back so, to so I think I mean um, so some of the frustrations that, that I know that I've had using the camera and a lot of users as well. Just simple things like um, you, you know certainly using it as a documentary style camera. You're going to be going in between different lighting setups, going from daylight to inside tongue tongue and stuff like that. And in those in the current system, you've got to sort of stop what you're doing, go to the menu, scroll down to to white balance, change change that over, and. I think you guys have got a solution for that. Yes, there's been a lot of those sorts of situations where you go, can the camera do it? Yes, it can. Is it easy to do? Well, I've got to go through two or three menu items. And, and this is the problem when you get into software-driven, menu-driven sort of cameras and technology. Yeah. You have to go through a menu structure. So we thought, let's try and get rid of as much of that as we can. Let's make it much faster and simpler. The white balance one's a good example, yeah. uh, where you go, I've got to be moving between two different lighting environments. Um, or, for example, frame rates. That's one where I felt like, if you're, you're working at a project frame rate, but then you want to go and do a, a slow motion shot, so you want to increase the frame rate, I now have to go back into a menu system, change my frame rate, come back out, take my shot, go back to my project frame rate. It's just too slow. And, and when you're in a fast-paced environment, you need speed. This software is designed for speed. So later on this year, we're going to be um, releasing this software uh, for all Ursa customers for free. Um, and this is a complete rewrite of Ursa software, uh, both operating system and GUI. And it gives you a whole load of new, exciting, easier to use Can things. Um, and a lot's been added into this from the ground up. From the First thing is, one of the biggest requests we had was for lookup table support. Yeah. And the ability to take a lookup table from Resolve yeah. and add that into the camera to generate a look. Um, one of the great things about Ursa is you've got lots of different ways of looking at the image. Right? So you've got multiple SDI outputs, you've also got a viewfinder, you've also got monitors. Yeah. But different individuals need to see it in different ways. Yeah. So you can now take a lookup table, it's a 17 point to tetrahedral lookup table, struggle, struggle saying that, um, that you can output from Resolve, you load it onto a CFast card and you can load those into the camera. Um, Ursa will accept up to six different lookup tables and then you can select where you want to send that lookup table to. So you can have one coming to the screen on the camera, a different lookup table going out to a client monitor? So the camera itself will operate under one lookup table, so that's your recording. Yeah. Um, however, you can turn that on or off. So for example, you may have it off for your camera operator, but you might want it on for your director's view. So you can select which of your outputs has that lookup table applied, but it will only be a single lookup table that that camera is universally operating to. But you can have multiple lookup tables, so then you can change between them for changing the look. Yeah. So that's a nice thing, I think. It makes it very, very simple. But in a similar vein, you also may have different camera operators. So we've also added into this the ability to load presets, uh, load and export presets. So you can have up to six different presets for different operators, and when you jump on, onto the camera, either as a different user or maybe in a different environment, then you can simply load the preset for that environment, location, application that you're, that you're walking into. So that's been added in as well. Um, lots of other little things that we've added to make the whole operating experience a lot easier. Um, first thing is white balance. 
Um, previously we had a, a number of preset white balance temperatures with the principle that many users were going to take that content into a colour grading suite so getting it close was close enough in order to shoot with but perhaps uh, when you take it through post you can then go and do your colour fixing. Lots, many more users are now using it as a studio camera or they're using it as an ENG style camera and you need to have a much more control and finesse over white balance. Yeah. So we've improved the white balance controls where it's a constant variable. A constant variable? It is a variable. Um, <laughs> but finger control on the, on the touch of the screen. Um, and also we've added in a little tint control. So you can adjust white balance, but then you can also adjust your tint between green and magenta. Yeah. Um, and again, it's, it, the increments are very, very fine. So it becomes very easy then to get a very accurate color balance yeah. through the camera. Um, lots of things like that have been added, um, including things like the off-speed um, uh, frame project frame rates and the ability to, to record presets for white balance to function buttons on the camera. So the function buttons are now completely programmable. Uh, there's a whole range of different options that so you we can... finally have something that we can do with the function buttons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we had it in mind. We just hadn't didn't have it ready yet. <laughs> well, it was good thinking ahead and having those there, but then yeah. it's. Uh... Well, part of the challenge is how. Yes, we want to do something with the function buttons, but through the software interface, you've got to make it easy to allocate what that function button does. Yeah. Um, so, in enabling the function buttons, the new software interface makes it very, very easy to allocate what each button does, uh, and you can have it set to preset color temperatures, for example or I could have it set to preset frame rates, yeah. or I could have it set to off-speed frame rate for when I want to do a slow motion. So if I want to jump between you know, a, a project frame rate and a, and a slow motion shot, I've just got to press one button on the camera and it changes that frame rate. And I, I was, we were just having a little play about with it there, and we sort of discovered with the setup as it is at the moment, we can set a default white balance to say, uh, set it to daylight, um, and then program one of those function buttons to jump to tungsten. Um, but then that's a toggle button, so we don't have to take up both buttons no. to go between two presets. We can just use one button yeah. to jump between tungsten and daylight, which would then give us the other button to program to something else, yeah. such as speed ramping and slow motion and stuff like that. And you can, you can change them, so depending on how you use that toggle button. So you can set that button to be an on-off. Yeah. So you set it as an on-off button, and then you define what it is you want to turn on and off. Yeah. In which case, white balance and a given temperature. Yeah. So you know that every time you press that button, it's going to turn on and off a given white balance at a given temperature. Yeah. But the software, the new software interface is designed to give you that level of flexibility, um, but make it easy to do and fast to do. Yeah. And it is a massive difference. It, everybody's seen Ursa, has seen the capabilities of what this camera can do in image quality. This new software update, it's a new camera. It, it, it's such a big difference to, the, to the, the, the ergonomics of the camera, to the feel of the camera, to the operation of the camera. And there's so much more that's been added in here, it's almost like a completely new camera. So this is a really exciting thing for us. And I guess that's been quite interesting because for the last uh, four years or so, you guys have been coming out with a new camera yeah. every show. I think this year is, is now the exception where there's not a physical new camera. I didn't get that 4K pocket camera that you promised me. <laughs> Uh, that, that, that's got to come. Um, but it looks like you guys have sort of taken a bit of a different step where the focus has been more on the software side and improving the functionality of the existing range. Um, and yeah, like I said, we just had a bit of a play about with that there and there's I mean, that, so much control over it now. To be honest, that is very much the story um, because Ursa has been an incredible success for us as a, as a camera, uh, as a platform, as, as a design uh, ergonomically in terms of uh, physically how you use it, how you work with it, its lightness, its shape, yeah. its ease of use. And rather than go away and keep developing that hardware platform, we've got a fantastic platform in Ursa. What we need to do is work out how can we increase that add value to the customers that have already invested in an incredible platform. And this is part of that process. I think the combination of, of, of announcements that we have at the show this year, both on the studio side for people who are using Ursa as a studio type camera, and then for those that are using it more in the documentary, independent filmmaking, music making, drama, video, th those sort of video type applications, then there's a massive update there as well to make it easier, quicker, faster, or simpler to use. Um, we recognize that when you're purchasing a camera at this level, it's a big investment. And it's a difficult decision to make because there is a lot of choice out there. Um, we wanted to try and get as much as we could do out of Ursa as a platform for yeah. customers that have already invested in it, but also give us a great platform to continue to develop on moving forwards. Yeah. So, so that's why we're not announcing any cameras this year. What we're doing is trying to get as much as we can out of what we think is, is the best camera in the industry. Yeah.
Um, so I've got a few questions from the online o uh, audience, but I guess the, the main one that's going around at the moment is uh, this magenta issue that's kind of reared its head in the uh, joyful places that are online forums and Facebook groups. Um, so I, I guess you, you guys are aware of the, 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 the chat that's going around. Is there anything that you can say about uh, that issue? Is it an issue? Yeah, we're aware of the, the conversation that's been going around on the internet. Um, obviously, we, you know, we keep an eye on, on the feedback that we're getting from people who are using the cameras. Um, what we have seen is that the amount of conversation that's going on the, um, on the internet, especially on some of the forums, doesn't reflect the number of customers that contacted us in relation to that particular issue. Um, it is the internet, and sometimes you end up with situations where people end up amplifying and repeating messages that maybe they haven't experienced. Um, but I would say if anybody does have that particular issue, and then there's two things I think, one of them is really in relation to vignetting, and the other one is in relation to a magenta colour cast. Uh, if anybody is experiencing those issues, please get in contact with us, because we want to know. Um, we haven't had enough reports of, of issues in order for us to identify if there is a problem or not. Um, most of the customers out there don't seem to be reporting this as a problem, so if there is an issue, obviously we want to deal with it. Um, what we have seen through our testing, uh, I mean, we know, we know that the, the colour science in Ursa does have a slight magenta shift. Uh, that is the way the colour science works. Yeah. But, but all, all cameras typically have, they're either a little bit warmer, a little bit colder? A, sl a slight shift. I think anybody that's working with digital cameras for the last 10 to 15 years or longer, 20 years, will know that every sensor has a slight different colour shift. Now, you can dial that out. You can either do it in camera. Uh, and part of the reason why we have much better white balance controls in the new software is to help users who are using this and need to get accurate white balance on set dial that out. Um, also in post-production you can remove it, but that is part of the way that, that it works. If it is extreme for any reason, please get in contact with us, yeah. um, because we want to work out why it is beyond the parameters of what we would describe as, as a calibrated sensor. Yeah. Um, there's also been reports, I think, of vignetting, uh, and I've seen various images. Again, it's quite a hard one to, to quantify as to where that is coming from. Um, very often it's a lens-related issue, but if anyone is experiencing an unusual amount of vignetting that isn't and related, again, please get in contact because we want to isolate where these issues may be arising from yeah. and ensure that we can fix it if it is in relation to the calibration of the sensors from the factory. Okay, great. Well, again, Tim, thank you very much for your time. No, not at all. Uh, always a pleasure, Ben. Always a pleasure. There you go. Uh, for the first year in a while, no actual new cameras from Black Magic, but some massive updates, uh, quite exciting updates uh, to the current range of cameras in the certainly the Ursa Mini with the studio functionality and also the new software which uh, still going to be a little while till we get it, uh, looking at June thereabouts, but it's going to be good when it, when it drops. I'm going to head out back to the show floor, see what else we can find out. Until next time, I'm Ben, this is Film Live, see you later.